Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2003 Mazda Protégé LX. Up front is a 2.0 liter inline four and down below is a four speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this Mazda Protégé for a couple of reasons, but mainly the fact that I am a huge Mazda fan. It is my favorite brand. I personally own a Mazda 3 and this is the predecessor to that car. This was sort of the liaison between the Mazda 323 in the early 90s as seen here in hatchback form and then the Mazda 3 that came in the early 2000s. So this is the 2003 model. It was towards the end of its run and there's some interesting talking points to mention with that. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form. It takes under a minute to fill out and I come out to you. But let's get back to that two liter under the hood. It is not super powerful. They did make a Mazda Speed Protégé back in the day that had a turbocharger. This is not that. This is not anything spectacular. It won't wow your grandma on the drag strip, but what it will do is be reliable. The brothers that own this car, Otto and Carl, haven't had any major issues with it. And up here in Minnesota, they've started it as cold as negative 37 degrees three days in a row and the little protege never gave up. That is some reliability. Now, like I said, paired to it is an automatic transmission. However, you could find these in manual if you wanted, and that would always be my preference. I've driven manual Mazdas from this era, manual proteges, and the shifter feels wonderful. So I would have liked to have seen that, but this automatic, it's doing fine today, and I don't have any big worries. Last but not least, of course, the protege is front wheel drive. So how does it feel to drive a Mazda protege? Well, it feels very similar to its competitors back in the era. I'm talking the Honda Civic EK or the Toyota Corolla. Now the beauty of that era is that all three of those cars are gonna be very reliable and pretty fun to drive all in their own respective right. Mazda was right up there with them, but back in the early 2000s, they didn't have quite the brand recognition that they have here today. So this was the underdog of the early 2000s competing against the Civic and Corolla, even though it does drive so similar. Early. Visibility is great. It still does have pretty thin A pillars. The ride is decently harsh, but it is an economy car. So keep that in mind when making your purchase. But with that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have four gauges. Off to the left is my coolant temperature and fuel. In the center is my speedometer. And off to the right is my tachometer. On the steering wheel, we do have cruise control options at the bottom right. Very nice to see that on the LX trim. This also does remind me of the Mazda MX-5 steering wheel from the same era for probably very obvious reasons. Off to the left, we do have a climate control vent bunch of dead switches with the gauge dimmer switch and moving out of the door we would have a latch to get in and out however it is broken on both doors so i kind of feel like i'm in a saw movie right now with no exit but i'm sure i'll find a way if this video is getting posted then we do have our power mirrors power windows and window locks Moving into the center, we have two climate control vents with the hazard switch, our multi-function audio system with CD player and tape deck. And then we have our climate controls down below. We actually have the AC working here today on this warm summer day. Absolutely love that, but temperature off to the left, fan speed in the center, where to send it off to the right. Then we do have a 12 volt outlet and a pull out ashtray and two cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the O3 protege. However, very predictably it fails the big friggin' bottle test. <laughs> Then we have the shifter itself, very, very 90s feeling. And what I mean by that is it's very chunky, very plasticky, not very exact, a little bit of wiggle when you hit it with your hand, but that's okay. And down below that we have the handbrake. The seats are comfortable. They're finished in this really nice taut cloth. Again, a remnant of the 90s that I really truly miss because these seats are warm in the winter and they're cool in the summer. Not super cool, but yeah, decently cool. They're tan. They don't absorb heat as much as the black leather seats would. And so I actually like these a lot and I think they aged really well. I think these still look really good and that's all I can ask for from 21 year old seats. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2003 Mazda Protégé LX and a couple of things to note. First of all, I'm 5'11", never been called a small guy in my life and I fit back here. My head 
isn't hitting the ceiling, my knees aren't hitting the seat in front of me. They're coming very close, both my knees and my head, but as I am here today, not touching anything, which is really nice. Manual locks. I do have window switches and a light, I guess. No real amenities back here. I don't even get any ashtrays or cup holders down here. No center console, although you can fold these seats down in a 60-40 split. And we do have car seat anchors up here, which is very nice. But other than that, not anything crazy. But I fit. I'll take that as a win. Let's hop into the trunk. Talk about the cargo space. Right around the back of the Mazda Protégé. Single key here. Open it up and pop it up like that. Here we have the trunk of the Mazda Protégé from 2003, the LX trim level, and we don't get anything. However, we can pull this carpet up and we do get a spare tire, a little bit of corrugated cardboard here and the spare tire down there. Something you don't really find in modern cars much anymore. However, I will say Mazda in 2024 is still very good about spare tires. Almost all of their vehicles, to my knowledge, all their vehicles come with spare tires. I might be wrong on that, but I've yet to find one that doesn't. So very cool that they did that in 03 and very cool that they do that in 2024. Now we got to talk about the looks and I do like the foresty green color of this particular protege. I feel like every other protege I see is either yellow or blue, like a dark midnight blue, like the one I reviewed earlier. So it is nice to see it in a slightly different color. I think the tan interior with the green exterior is a really nice match. And overall, I'm happy with it. But let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving the Mazda protege from 2003. Well, it's been a very nice experience. Like I mentioned with the driving feel, it drives just like the Corollas and Civics of the era. There's almost no distinguishing differences between the three cars. And that could be a good thing or a bad thing. But like I said, the reliability is there, so I'm not going to complain. What's fun for me is to drive this car with all of the knowledge that I have of what Mazda later became. Now, when this car came out, it was still very heavily influenced by Ford because Ford owned the majority share in Mazda at the time from the late 70s until 2015. But you could see Mazda starting to sort of get their personality when it came to their economy cars. And if you look at this slowly molding into the Mazda 3 and the second gen Mazda 3, and the third gen Mazda 3, and now the fourth generation Mazda 3, which is nearing the end of its life, probably going to get a fifth gen somewhat soon, you can see the natural progression. Filming here today, about a week before, I spent a lot of time in Yellowstone National Park. One of my favorite things seeing there was seeing the natural evolution of the geysers and how they had formed over hundreds of thousands of years, and you could sort of see, oh, you know, that's what it looked like at the beginning, that's how it's changing. <laughs> It actually does feel nice. <laughs> That's how I feel driving this protege. All the basis of which makes Mazda so great is right here in this protege. We just weren't aware of it yet. Mazdas have always been somewhat slim on features, but they make up for it in driving feel. This car, even in its automatic format, is an absolute hoot. Taking it around the back roads of Minnesota here today, really, really enjoying it. And that's always been Mazda's strong suit, and I'm happy to report that it was still alive here in 2003. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Carl and Otto for letting me take out their Mazda Protégé. They have been absolutely wonderful here today. I've reviewed several of their vehicles that you'll either see on the channel or have already seen. Very, very knowledgeable, and I appreciate them very, very much. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.